Well, good morning. It's uh, well as we're filming this, the latest in our series of Meet the Artist. Um, obviously, I'm a bit excited. I'm anxious. I'm waiting for it all to begin. And here we are. It's a long time since we've had a Meet the Artist interview. Um, they do take a while, and we are in. By we, I mean Tom and I and the artist. I'm exciting you. I'm sort of tempting you with who it is, and it's early spring. It's been we're in March, and you should be watching this hopefully in April. So we're bang on trend and on season to be in the fabulous studio in Edinburgh of none other than Jenny Matthews Aris. Hello, Jenny. Hello. So <laughs> um, you don't look too anxious. No, you no. You look quite happy. Yeah, so I've met you before. It's fine. <laughs> and there was a reason not to come back. But Jenny's invited Tom and I back with a nice cup of tea with oat milk. I'm learning to become healthy. And we're here to talk about Jenny's life, her paintings, which are award-winning. Jenny's award-winning. and um, But they're just happy. Tom walked in here, and Tom doesn't normally say too much about the paintings. He's putting up the cameras, and he just went, wow, these are happy and they're bright. And they are happy and they're bright. So, Jenny, I've mentioned the initials after your name. I've mentioned your award winner, and we'll talk about some of that in a minute. But what I'd really like to know is, as a little girl, what age were you when you noticed you had a talent for art? Well, we have a painting of me at an easel preschool age so four yep yep and it, let's go on from there to art school mm -hmm. did did you study what did you to study art in depthly throughout school yes i did um i used to do people's art homework at primary school and then at high school i did higher art and then i went to edinburgh college of art and studied drawing and painting for four years was it something you think was meant to be and you always wanted to yeah, happen yeah. Or did you I know one of your your daughters is a doctor you never mm. thought about doing anything totally different if, strangely I didn't think about being an artist because in a sense I didn't know that was something you could do but I liked art and that's what I wanted to do but I never really thought to myself am I going to be an artist or anything else I didn't have another plan though I know you're very close to your mum who's still happily around and were, were it your parents arty or any of the family uh, my great aunt apparently was good, although at that e in that era, she was a primary school teacher, but she was very arty. We've got some of her paintings and crafts and things that she made, but nobody else. Yeah, and you were always Edinburgh, weren't you? Uh, well, I was actually born in Canada, oh. but I came to Edinburgh when I was four, and I, I've been in Edinburgh since then. It was always a surprise. <laughs> so, Jenny, t t just go on a little bit. So, from school... You then went to art school mm. directly? Yeah. Right. Tell us a little bit about choosing art school and what then happened. Uh, well, I was accepted to Edinburgh. So at that time, you know, you would go, you most often go to the one that was nearer where you lived. So I went to Edinburgh College of Art, stayed at home. And um, I went there with two other friends from school, from the art department. So the three of us, Janet, Jenny, Janet and Jill, <laughs> all went off to art college together <laughs> and uh, I studied drawing and painting uh, so for four years so I did a lot of painting in oil but I also really liked watercolour I preferred watercolour from the start almost and, instantly yeah I, I, I prefer watercolour yes and I know it's sort of been well quoted and I can kind of see I, I can see it obviously because I'm a very big fan of the paintings of Dame Elizabeth Blackadder. So when did she appear in your life? I think it must have been second year I chose an elective on a Friday, which was taught at the Botanic Gardens in Edinburgh. It was called Botanical Illustration, but it was not technically Botanical Illustration. It was painting flowers and plants. And she was teaching it. And there, I think there were only about 10 of us in the class. And she used to, rather than tell us what to do, she would be painting. So the whole day she was sitting beside us painting. And we could just go and watch her and she would show us little tricks about how to use watercolour. It was always watercolour. Would she have been in her 50s then, probably, or a bit young? I imagine, yes, because she retired fairly shortly after that. But I, I've heard people, some, I'm not going to name drop, 
but some quite well-known people have been in the gallery and they have actually instantly seen a comparison, mm. parable or whatever, between your paintings and hers. Do you get mm. that yourself? Yeah, I can see why people say that. But however, if I look at her pictures, I would never think it was mine. I think they're completely different if you compare. If you had one beside the other, you would never mix them up. But then I guess I'm doing flowers and plants in watercolour. So there is definitely a similarity. And did she become more than a, a tutor? Or did you become friendly? Um, not particularly. No, she was very retiring sort of person. She was very friendly and open, but very retiring. Quite a very modest, quiet sort of person, diffident. I think people you know, who watch these videos are often interested in the, the story behind a successful artist. So many people dream of going to art school and mm. being taught in the way in which you were taught. And I've actually never asked you this, but when you graduated, what then happened? <laughs> well, I did not have a plan. <laughs> Fortunately, uh, a gallery in the centre of Edinburgh offered me an exhibition, a solo exhibition. So I did it because I didn't know what else to do. And then it just kept happening. And that was 1986, and I'm still doing that. Almost unheard of, really, nowadays. Yeah, you know, probably. go to art school and instantly um, have a first show. Well, I've sold about two-thirds of the degree show. So, you know, I didn't know that was going so to happen. all different so. people, or was yeah. it somebody who just No, no, no all her. different people. There was also a businessman in Edinburgh who, um, he bought eventually about 15 or 20 of them. So he started buying them at that degree show and he continued helping me along and helping me a bit with business and that kind of thing. It's, it's you know, you kind of need somebody to help you in business because you don't learn about business at art college. It's fascinating. I've spoken to other, you know, a handful of artists in, in my studio, like Ian Faulkner, and I remember somebody went in and just about bought all of his degree show. Oh, right. And they went on with that. So it, and, and then him and Stuart Gatherer, they were all snapped up very quickly. So it's interesting in your dare I say it, a little bit older than them. And it was going on then, and it seems to have continued from the degree show. Mm -hmm. But no, it's just not something I hear too much about now, the painters coming through the degree show and being snapped up. So then your life's continued, and you met Pierre, and you settled down in family. So were you pretty much continuing then throughout the rest of your life? Mm -hmm. But... Some of the let's go back to the award-winning Jenny and tell me. I, I'm curious about what I know has played played a big part of your life, Fabriano. Mm. Can you explain a bit about that? Well, I initially was introduced to it. I think it was 2016, probably by Angus McEwen, who nominated me for the Biennial International Watercolor Prize in Fabriano. Uh, so I put something in for that. And then I was also, he also invited me to put something in for the other event that happens in Fabriano, which is the uh, annual watercolour convention called Fabriano in Aquarello. And then he was leading that, leading Scotland. There's about 80 countries involved. And um, he then handed over to me to lead it. So I've been leading it since then. And what so, is Fabriano? Uh, Fabriano is a town, a small village a little bit bigger than a village, uh, in the mountains of uh, Italy. And that is where the Fabriano paper comes from. So hundreds of years ago, they started making paper. And now they have a big factory on the outskirts of the town, which makes the Fabriano paper. It's a very well-known brand of paper. And then it's become effectively a con an art convention. Yes. Well, off the back of the paper manufacturer, because people know about Fabriano paper, they've been marketing the town with this new convention so that they have thousands of artists coming once a year. So it's thousands of artists flock mm. here. And maybe I've got this wrong. So you have been a participant and you're now really a leader. Is that correct? Yes, but the leaders also participate. Yeah. yeah. So you lead the country. Yes, by Scotland. People from Scotland yes. to Italy. Yeah. So at least they're painting and some sometimes the artists come as well. Does it give you a buzz? Yes. Uh -huh. <laughs> it's fantastic. No, I, yeah. think that, I think if people watching this video, you know, I know a lot of enthusiastic amateur artists um, like watching the videos and, you know, when we're meeting people like Jenny, and I urge you to investigate a bit more about Fabriano mm. and um, it, it's it's phenomenal. What 
Jenny, well, we're going to talk about really what you're famous for in two seconds about you know your your florals. But at your left hand side, I've just noticed two paintings. Oh, you, yeah. so you're known for florals. But if you'd like to put them up to camera, these are watercolors of. Is that wrong? It's wrong. Yes. Yeah, so th these were on my trips to Fabriano. Um, I need to stay in Rome on the way because it's a bit of a trek to get to Fabriano. That's a hard so, trip in your life. Oh, isn't terrible, it? isn't it? <laughs> uh, so, yeah, I love doing cityscapes as well, but it's always colour I'm looking for, as you can see. They're utterly beautiful. <laughs> and this is the first. Jenny and I have known each other since before I opened a gallery when we were involved in Maggie's, and I've never seen um, you paint cityscapes like that, so I'll be pestering you about that later. So let's talk, Jenny, about what we all know are classic Jenny Matthews paintings. So these are finished, I think, aren't they? Yes. So tell us about this painting for a start. Uh, well, flower, um, bouquets like that I always do from life. So I ha I got this big bouquet of flowers from a flower farm uh, in the borders. So I have the flowers in front of me in the studio and it's all painted from life. That's pure watercolour. There's nothing else in there. There, there's well, you know I love your work, but we're going to talk also. This might slightly bamboozle you, Jenny. So we're going to have a painting drop in as you and I are talking, called September Sun, which has literally just arrived in the gallery. Mm -hmm. Surprise, surprise! You started it in September, and Tom's going to drop in some photographs into the video right now while we're talking about September Sun. So. Would you just explain, because there's photographs, actually, I'm delighted of you painting it, yeah. and to talk about the procedure and the how it began and how the idea, but even putting the flowers together. Uh -huh. Well, I grew all the flowers from seed myself, so they all started out in the greenhouse in the garden, and then I planted them out in the garden. And that little scene, it just seemed to work. The light was nice. There's a kind of turquoise fence behind it um, and some really light flowers against the, the darker fence. And so I just put it together there. I I went and bought an extra large drawing board because I didn't have one big enough. I knew I wanted to do a really big painting. And uh, I just sat on the grass and propped this big board up and I painted the whole thing in the garden. So I'm fully aware that when you your paintings take a while to get them together, to get them beautifully framed by this, you're very loyal to your framer and um in Edinburgh, I think. Yeah, Perth, Perth. Perth, isn't it? Yeah. And Hugo Ring. But <laughs> there's a drone, there's a drone. <laughs> But you actually, because of the watercolour and because of the subject matter, you have to, you paint quickly. Well, I need to really because flowers don't stay alive for very long. Let's look here, Tom, at this wonderful vase of flowers. And the painting mm. right behind Jenny is of the vase of flowers. So Let's just turn. Can you turn around, Jenny, just for a second? Mm -hmm. So this painting is literally just finished, isn't it? It's not quite finished. Not quite yeah. finished. So a lot of that is about speed, as as we notice the yeah. tulips dropping. Yes, you can see the difference, and that's just a couple of days. So I need to work quickly. Um, no, I mean there's other things. Watercolor dries quickly, but also I like when I get an idea, I like to follow it through and just keep going with it. I don't like to stop a picture and come back to it later because I've lost that momentum. And I think you do, I think you've said to me before, you quite like painting when the flowers are in the season. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So this painting will actually be appearing at the Ballad to Get to Work. What are you going to call it? Any ideas? Daffodils and Tulips. <laughs> Reds and Titles yellows. is not my favourite. Mem <laughs> memories of David Mead's visit. <laughs> or the, the annoying arrangement. <laughs> um, anyway, so when we talk about things like that, you know, we're there's also another two paintings which you've painted for us, which are in the gallery, and they're a bit different. And mm. I think we have a photograph also that Tom can drop in of you looking very bohemian and very sassy, sitting on a rock at the River Dee. In the middle and of the just, river, yeah. you just start painting. Yeah. Uh -huh. And does that happen regularly in your life? Uh, I want it. To, I'd like it to happen more because I really enjoy that. Um, you've had a connection with Dee for, for oh, since time. I was four years old. Yeah. Yes. And, Always, what was that? Just coming family holidays. Holidays, yes. Every summer, two weeks, Braemar. Tom will drop in these paintings as well, and I think what the what I think is quite important with these little videos we take it lets people learn that we're you know, most of the artists 
including Jenny, they're not just one trick ponies. And you, but your main love will always be flowers. Yes, yeah, true. So here we are. You've been painting for many years and all of the rest of it, and life's changing. Where do you see your art going and developing in the future? Uh, well, I'd like to do more portraits, maybe. Because I started doing portraits in lockdown because there was an, an initiative on Instagram called um, Portraits for NHS Heroes. And it was basically artists offering a free portrait to anyone who was working in the NHS during the pandemic. Oh, yeah, yeah. So I started doing portraits there. I thought, even if they're bad, they're free, so nobody's going to complain. So I had to go at doing that, and I really liked it. And in fact, there's a book that was published at the end of it, and the portrait I did of my daughter is in that book, by coincidence. I did about eight or nine portraits, but hers was chosen to be in the book. Gosh, you you get surprised at things, and I didn't expect that. So <laughs> for, no, and it, it's fascinating, and because... So, am I right? Floral will still be... Mm your great love yeah, yeah. or do you see yourself going up and starting to paint St Giles or the Edinburgh Castle and things like that I might do some of that but I it's always flowers I can't help it <laughs> and gardening because you love gardening yeah. and everything yeah. uh -huh. so here we are it's amazing how time goes sitting in your lovely house with your beautiful garden which gives you inspiration and I know that I've known you for a long time but I feel as if I've learned quite a lot particularly about Rome, particular portraiture, that shocked me. <laughs> but really, has it been as painful being interviewed as you thought, Jane? No, I didn't think it would be anyway. <laughs> I'm smiling. So on that note, here we are, and I'm not going to tell you where you'll all be pestering her. Here we are, mm -hmm. finishing off, and I'd like to say thank you very much to Jenny Matthews, RSW, for a likeness of a peep in her... You have to turn around, Jenny, and smile. To <laughs> some, a peep in your studio. So thank you very much. Thank you. 